Advanced Functions, Chapter 7, Section 3, Double Angle Formulas. So today I'm going to um, talk to you about how to find double angle formulas based on what we learned in the last lesson on compound angle formulas, which were the addition subtraction formulas. I will go over some of the textbook examples and also I'll give you a link to some homework that I took up with some of the trickier questions that my students had trouble with so you can so I don't have to do all the questions for you, but there are plenty more that you could have a look at on my PB Wiki site. So if you like the lesson today, please give me a thumbs up. If you give me a thumbs up, give me a comment maybe if you have time, saying what you liked about it, what you wish I'd done differently, if you'd like more questions done. And also, if you give me a thumbs down, there's always someone who doesn't like the lesson, but it would be nice if you let me know why you don't like it. So let's talk about the double angle formulas. Let's get to work. So the sine of a plus b, sine a cos b, cos a sine b. Remember, sine cos, cosine, same sine as with the sine. Now, if we wanted to find out what the sine of 2x was, so the sine of 2x, remember that would be a horizontal compression by a half, so the period would change from 2 pi to pi. So this is the same thing as me writing the sine of x plus x, isn't it? Okay, so let's do that. Let's find out what is the sine of x plus x. You can do this, so if you forget these formulas, you can rattle these off in no time at all. Cos x sine x. And you can see that we're adding the same thing. Sine cos cosine. This could be to sine x cos x. Right? 2 sine x cos x is so that means that the sine of 2x is 2 sine x cos x. And that's the first formula that you're go going to want to remember. They show up a lot when you're doing the, um, the identities lesson. This is an identity, but when we do some proofs. Okay, so that's a sine x. The cos of a plus b, we're going to do it the same way. So instead of cos 2x, we'll write the cos of x plus x. And then we're just going to plug that into the formula here and we're going to get a really nice formula. Look at this, watch. Cos x times cos x minus sine x times sine x. And you know that cos x times cos x is equal to cos squared x. And sine x times sine x is sine squared x. So that means that the cos of 2x is equal to cos squared x plus sine squared x. Now this is the tricky one because from here we can find a few more variations on the theme because we don't we do know what cos squared x is equal to. Remember that when we did the um, when we did the Pythagorean relationship, we said that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So from this formula, we can derive two more formulas. Let's replace this by, we'll write it like this, 1 minus sine squared x. So let's do the first one. So we can say cos 2x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x. So that's two of them, right? 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And the other option here would be, of course, to write this as 1 a sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. And we're going to plug that in for the sine squared x. So that's going to give me cos 2x is equal to cos squared x minus, now be careful, 1 minus cos squared x, put it in brackets. So that's cos squared x minus 1 plus cos squared x, and that's going to give you 2 cos squared x minus 1. And those are the two extra formulas that you should know. Let's just write this cos 2x, and this is cos 2x here. And I'm going to put a nice 
purple bracket around these two as well. So there's your two extra formulas. So now we have three for cos 2x. We could use this, this one, or this one. And depending on the information that you have, you will choose one of these to make your life easier, depending on what information you've been given. Okay, so let's do the tan of a plus b. So let's do the tan of 2x now. So remember this formula from the last lesson. So if I do tan of x plus x is going to be tan x plus tan x. That's two of them, isn't it? over 1 minus tan x times tan x. This is a really easy thing for you to figure out. Tan x plus tan x is 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. And there you go. There's your formulas for the double angle formulas for tan 2x, cos, and sine. So we've got four little formulas. Actually, you only really need to remember these three, right? The sine 2x, cos 2x, and this one. And you can figure these two out at any other time on your own. So that was an easy one to derive uh, to show the proof for. You could do that on your own. And let's take a look at some of the homework questions that you would have to do for this assignment. Okay, so we have given sine theta is 3 over 5. Find sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta. So you want to pick a formula that's going to use sine theta being 3 over 5. So sine 2 theta, what's sine 2 theta? Sine 2 theta. Now remember, we just did it. Do you remember the sine 2 theta? 2 sine x cos x. Okay, so we're going to have to find the cos because we only have the sine. So that's 2 sine x cos x. So we have the sine is 3 over 5, and we're in quadrant, so between pi over 2 and pi puts us in the second quadrant. So we're over here like this, and remember that sine is y over r, right? y over r. So my y is 3, that's the height. My r is 5, so my x, if I'm in this quadrant, it's going to be 4, but it's going to be negative 4, right? Because I'm in quadrant 2, pi over 2 to pi. Okay, so we've got that figured out. So that means that cos of theta is going to be equal to minus 4 over 5. And that makes sense because we're in the s quadrant where cos is negative. So now all I have to do is plug in the values. 2 times 3 fifths and cos x is minus 4 fifths. So that's 2 times 3 is 6, times negative 4 is minus 24, over 5 times 5 is 25. And there you go, that's your first, your first initiation into the double angle homework questions. Okay, so let's look at this one. If cos x is minus 3 fifths, find cos 2x. So, just flipping back here for a second, if I have these three different formulas for cos 2x, and I've been given the cos of x, which was minus 3 fifths, which formula should you use? Well, I don't need to find the sine. Why would I need to find the sine when I have this formula uses only cos? So that's the one I'm going to choose. So cos 2x, 2 cos squared x minus 1. So let's write that out. Cos 2x equals 2 cos squared x minus 1. Good idea to write out these formulas before you start your homework assignment so that you have them handy beside you and that way you'll get some practice in trying to remember them. Okay, so I'm going to write 2 cos squared minus 3 fifths minus 1. Now what did I do wrong here? I already know what cos x is. I don't need cos squared there, but I do have to square it. That's a common mistake that I did for you because my students did that a lot. So 2 cos squared x, so minus 3 fifths squared minus 1, right? So plug it in, cos x is minus 3 fifths cos squared, so I have to square it though. So that's 2 times 
times 9 over 25. So that's 18 over 25. And minus 1 is minus 25 over 25. And that's going to give me, I'll just put it over here, minus 7 over 25 for an answer. Okay. If angle X lies in quadrant 2 and tan of X is minus 4 over 3. So remember tan is y over x, right? y over x, y over x. So if my y, if I'm in this quadrant, that means the y is positive and the x is negative. So if this is 4, height of 4, this length is minus 3, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Determine sine 2x and cos 2x. Okay, so what's sine 2x? We already know it's 2 sine x cos x. And we have, let's write out what sine x and cos x are going to be so that we're ready to just plug them in. So the sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 4 fifths. And the cos of x is minus 3 over 5. All you have to do now is plug it in. So 2, the sine of x is 4 fifths. The cos of x is minus 3 fifths. And then just multiply. So I have 2 times 4 is 8. Times negative 3 is minus 24 over 25. 5 times 5. Okay, so the last one we're going to do is the cos of 2x. Well, we can use any of the formulas because we have both sine and cos. No other calculation is needed. Uh, let's find some room here. So cos 2x, let's use 2 cos squared x minus 1. And so I want to do 2 cos squared x is minus 3 fifths squared minus 1. And that's going to give me, again, we have 9 over 25. That's 18 over 25 minus 25 over 25. I'm running out of room. That gives me minus 7 over 25. Okay, so that's kind of easy and straightforward for you, I hope. Now, the trickier questions would be something like this. It says, write as a single trigonometric ratio, and they give you 6 sine theta cos theta. So when you look at that, I know it's kind of kind of confusing at the start, but once you see that you, what pattern are you dealing with here? Well, this 6 doesn't look right, but I do know that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, right? Sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta. And this is the pattern, right? Sine cos, 2 sine cos, but I have 6 sine cos. So if I factored out a 3, I would be left with 2 sine theta cos theta. So writing as a single trigonometric ratio just means I'm going to replace this by this and that's going to give me 3 times sine 2 theta. Okay, I know the first time you look at these you're going to go, oh man, I don't know what they're even doing here. But you'll catch on really quickly if you just follow what I'm going to say here. Now look at this, cos squared something minus sine squared. So think of this as being like theta here cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Well, what's cos squared theta minus sine squared theta? That's cos 2 theta, right? Let's write out the rule here. Cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. But my theta in this question is 3 halves theta. So that's going to be equal to the cos of 2 times theta, which is this thing right? This, all I'm doing is replacing this block here, theta, theta. So that's cos 2 theta. And I'm going to simplify by canceling those out or divide them into each other, which is a better way to say it. So that's the cos of 3 theta. So that makes sense because look, if I said cos of, let's say 5 theta, what would that be equal to? Well, we had 2 theta here, and we go to 1 theta. So if we have 5 theta, that's going to go to 5 halves theta, right? 
So you can think up all kinds of different variations on a theme here, but that's basically what you're doing. Just think of this as being, this is my theta, here's the pattern, and I'm just going to plug it in. Okay, so the third one here, we have cos, 2 cos squared theta minus 1, right? Forget what's in here, just call it theta for now. 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So that's cos 2 theta, right? Cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So instead of me having theta here, I have 7 theta over 2. So this is 2, sorry, cos cos of 2. And I plug in what I had for theta here. And cancel these out, and I get cos of 7 theta. So cos of 7 theta, I have to half it. Just like I went from 2 here to 1, I'm going from 7 to 7 over 2. Okay, last one. By this time, I think you have it all figured out. So I have, oh, this one's a little trickier though, because I have 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Well, again, that's a cos 2 theta, isn't it? Cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So what's my theta here? It's all of this, right? This is theta, or theta here. So this is the same as cos 2, and I'm going to write this out because I replaced, that's my theta, pi over 4 minus x over 2. Now, I'm multiplying each of these by 2, so this is the same as cos of pi over 2, right, get rid of this, and minus x. And, yeah, you're going to say, oh man, I didn't see that coming. Pi over 2 minus x, this is one of your um, co-function identities, right? Cos goes to sine, remember that from not too long ago. So that's just the sine of x. Do you remember that lesson? If not, go back, take a look at it. Okay, so that's those. I think I have one more question. Yes, I do. Okay, so here we go. Jim wants to find the sine of pi over 8. He knows that cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Well, you know that too, don't you? Cos of pi over 2. And he wants to know what is the cos of pi over 8. So remember when we looked at these equations when I was going along... Um, with you, we're saying how this goes from 2 theta to 1 theta. So if I had pi over 4 here, this is going to go to pi over 8, right? Pi over 4 to pi over 8. So if cos 2 theta, and I'm going to use my theta being pi over 4, I'm going to have 1 over root 2, which is the cos of pi over 4, is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared of pi over 8. Right, so if I did the cos of pi over 4 here, it's going to become half of it here. So half of pi over 4 is pi over 8, but I'm just going to plug in that this is already 1 over root 2 here. The rest of this is just simply um, algebraic. Right, I need to, I need to solve for the sine of pi over 8. So I need to do some rearranging. So the first thing I'm going to do, 1 over root 2, I'm going to subtract 1. I'll do every little step here for you so you don't get lost along the way. Okay, so 1 over root 2 minus 1, so that's 1 over root 2 minus 2 over root 2. Okay, so I'm finding a common denominator. I'm really going to do lots of steps here for you. Okay, so this is 1 minus 2 over root 2, right? That's the same thing. I said 2 over 4 minus 3 over 4. That's the same as 2 minus 3 all over 4. Okay, so I have this sine squared pi over 8. So I'm trying to find the sine of pi over 8. That was my, my mission here. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to rationalize the denominator. I always do that, right? I'm going to put it in purple here for you. Or it's kind of pink, isn't it? 
So I have root 2 over root 2. Multiply root 2 over root 2. So now I have... Oh, I could have done this. 1 minus 2. What's 1 minus 2? Minus 1. 1 over root 2 minus... Oh, I'm silly. Root 2 over root 2. There we go. I thought something was missing. This is equal to 1 minus 1. Okay, so that gives me root 2. Root 2 times 1 is root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is minus 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2. So root 2 minus 2, and I'm going to divide by minus 2. So that's the same as multiplying by minus a half. I multiply this by minus a half, gets rid of it. So I have this on the left side is going to be sine squared of pi over 8. Okay, so if I multiply by negative 1 in the top, so I'm going to flip them around because this one's going to be positive now and this one's going to be negative. So that's the same as 2 minus root 2. Right? If I do 2 minus root 2 over 4 is equal to sine squared of pi over 8. Okay, so now you know what I have to do next. I have to take the square root. If I take the square root of both sides like this, going to give me plus or minus on this side. I'm going to bring it up here because we're running out of room again. Okay, so I don't know if you can follow that. So if I take the root of 4, that's going to give me 2 in the denominator. So I still have plus or minus 2 minus root 2, and that's going to be equal to the sine of pi over 8. So this was question 9 on page 407 in your textbook. Um, Hopefully you followed along. It, it's not that hard once you've done one of them, right? That's the same thing, problem with math. Once you've seen the question and you've tried it once, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's not so bad. Okay, so again, leave me some messages. Uh, thumbs up. Subscribe. I notice only about 40% um, of you have subscribed that are watching the channel. I'd really appreciate your support, and I would really appreciate some thumbs up. Give me some incentive to keep going. All the best. Bye for now.